Andrew, are you that hungry? Why are you holding bread in your hand? <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not going to be eating this bread. When you find out what we're going to do to it, I don't think anyone's going to want to. This is, after all, our squeaky clean edition of Taiwan Insider. I'm Andrew Ryan. I'm Natalie So. Let's first get to the stories on our radar. This year's presidential inauguration will be simpler than usual due to the global pandemic. But fans of presidential memorabilia need not be disappointed. The Postal Service is releasing special stamps to mark the occasion. There are also commemorative coins and even limited edition alcohol for those who want to make a toast. Medical supply makers showcase their products at a virtual trade show on Monday, looking for new ways to meet demand in the age of COVID-19. And it wasn't all masks, gowns, and face shields. One of the more creative products was a robot that uses UV light to disinfect surfaces. After weeks of playing to empty stadiums, Taiwan's pro baseball teams will finally get fans in the stands. Up to 1,000 spectators will be allowed to attend games starting on Friday. But to keep COVID-19 at bay, they will all have to wear masks and spread themselves out through the stands. Schools are making preparations to keep middle school students safe from the coronavirus when they take their high school entrance exam this month. The test is only held once a year, so even students with a fever will be allowed to sit for it, but they'll be isolated in a separate room. The rest of them will be spread out and sit behind dividers, and they'll wear masks as they take this key exam. And under the radar, this week saw the beginning of summer on the Chinese Almanac. That means people are eating red fruits and vegetables to fill up with young energy and to refresh themselves. Let's start with our word of the week. Andrew, guess my word. All right. Applesauce. Makeup. Mom. Moms. Moms. <laughs> yes. Well, Mother's Day is near. It's on Sunday. And we have a new game today. I'm going to play with Andrew and Leslie. It's called Three Picks. And three pictures are going to tell us exactly what moms in Taiwan are thinking. That's right. A so happy that Mother's Day in advance. Thank you. All right. You ready for my word? Yes. All right. Obsession? Close. Obsessed? Yeah. Obsessive. Obsessive. Is that you? No. <laughs> this is a word to describe my hand washing and cleaning ever uh, since the pandemic broke that's out. That's true. And All of fact, us. I'm so obsessed that I went and learned how to make soap. So we're going to be sharing that interview with you a little bit later on in our show. Cool. Let's put these on the shelf. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is calling on the director of the World Health Organization to allow Taiwan to participate in the World Health Assembly later on this month. And also, the hashtag Tweet for Taiwan is trending on Twitter. For more on that, we go straight to Hashtag Taiwan with Leslie Liao. This week on Hashtag Taiwan, I want to talk to you about Taiwan, the United States, China, the World Health Organization, and the United Nations. There's no catchy song or embarrassing footage of me this week. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Hashtag is going geopolitical. Taiwan and the U.S. have partnered to fight COVID-19, a move which China strongly protests because they see any direct cooperation with Taiwan as an endorsement of Taiwan independence. Now, for those of you who forget, China says Taiwan belongs to them. However, Taiwan has been getting a lot of positive attention recently for how well it's handling the COVID-19 pandemic. This video in particular shares Taiwan's successes. But the fact remains that China single-handedly keeps Taiwan out of international organizations like the United Nations or the World Health Organization. In the past, most countries didn't challenge China mostly because of diplomatic reasons that I am in no way, shape, or form qualified to speak about, but oh boy, did that change last week. Oh boy, did that change. On May 1st, an official U.S. State Department Twitter account tweeted the following. They said the U.S. firmly believes that hashtag Taiwan belongs at the table when the world discusses hashtag COVID-19 and other threats to global health. Before 2017, Beijing didn't object to Taiwan joining the World Health Assembly as an observer. What changed? Hashtag tweet for Taiwan. This is an explicit endorsement for Taiwan from a U.S. government agency, and oh boy, it does not stop there. There were a total of six tweets all supporting Taiwan's participation in the WHO. The office said, Is it too much to ask that Taiwan be permitted to share their expertise, their commitment with the rest of the world? Will the world succumb to the PRC's pressure and intimidation? It's time to be heard and time to 
Hashtag tweet for Taiwan, hashtag Taiwan model. They finished their thread by asking people to join us to hashtag tweet for Taiwan's inclusion at the upcoming World Health Assembly so hashtag Taiwan can bring its incredible expertise to fight against hashtag COVID-19. The world needs Taiwan in this fight. Tell the WHO that it's time for Taiwan to be heard. They didn't simply endorse Taiwan. They started an entire campaign to get Taiwan into the WHO. But wait, there's more. The United States' UN Mission Twitter account made their own statement saying, The United Nations was founded to serve as a venue for all voices, a forum that welcomes a diversity of views and perspectives, and promotes human freedom. Barring hashtag Taiwan from setting foot on UN grounds is an affront not just to the proud Taiwanese people, but to UN principles. Hashtag tweet for Taiwan. For those of you that didn't know, if you hold a Taiwanese passport, it's likely that you'll be barred from entering any UN facilities. It doesn't matter if you're a journalist, a tourist, anyone really. Now, China has already expressed strong indignation and firm opposition to this campaign that the U.S. has started. And for those of you who are curious about how hashtag tweet for Taiwan is doing, here's something really interesting. Amal Sinha did an analysis of tweets that contained hashtag tweet for Taiwan between May 1st and May 5th. Out of 8,396 tweets containing the hashtag, he found that 32% came from India, 19% came from Taiwan, 15% came from the United States, and 12% came from Hong Kong. Now, I studied economics in school, so statistics like these really get me going, and that was the lesson we outpick of the week. Did I fail to mention that? Yeah, he forgot to mention it, but that's okay. That's hashtag Taiwan for the week. Follow us on social media and do leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. There's some new developments this week in the mysterious case of a Taiwanese university professor who died 40 years ago. The Transitional Justice Commission says the death of Professor Tewinton was probably not caused by an accident or by suicide. They say it's likely that he was murdered. We're going to tell you a little bit more about their reasoning in just a moment, but first let's take a look back at the story of Professor Tsung Wen Chen. Tsung Wen Chen graduated with a PhD in mathematics from the University of Michigan in 1978. He became an assistant professor at Carnegie Mellon University. Although photos show him as a carefree academic, he raised funds for activists opposed to Taiwan's authoritarian government and was reluctant to return to Taiwan. Life was good for the young professor. Chen was married and had a young baby. His mother encouraged him to visit Taiwan, saying it would be safe. So in 1981, at the age of 31, he traveled with his family to Taiwan for the first time in six years. During that trip, the garrison command took him in for questioning twice, the second time for more than 12 hours. The next day, Chen's body was discovered at National Taiwan University. Authorities say he committed suicide or had died of accidental causes. Secret communication between Washington and Taipei revealed that the U.S. suspected Chen had been tortured. They said that his injuries were not consistent with suicide or accidental fall. In the United States, people protested and demanded the truth about his death. To this day, people still suspect Chen was murdered. Taiwan's new law that would declassify sensitive documents might shed light on Chen's case and others like it. In fact, the classified documents have shed light on Chen's death. They offer a clearer picture of what happened nearly 40 years ago. The truth behind the 1981 death of Chen Wen-chen has proven so elusive that it was once made into a Hollywood movie. At the time of his death, secret police said that Chen committed suicide. But now, the Transitional Justice Commission says he was probably murdered. Newly declassified files helped them come to four conclusions. Officials say that Chen's phone number in the United States was closely monitored by the secret police. The secret police said that they sent Chen home right after they questioned him. But the Transitional Justice Commission said it took them an hour to send him to his home just two kilometers away. Officials say Chen's body was moved after sustaining a fatal injury to his back, suggesting that he was probably murdered. The Transitional Justice Commission says a cover-up is entirely possible because the secret police were in charge of the initial investigation. Nearly 40 years after the death of Chen Wen-chen, officials say that the secret police were likely involved in his murder. The commission will continue working to uncover more details that can help shed light on the case. This past Tuesday, the world marked a special day making sure that you have clean hands. And that's the subject of today's Taiwan Explained. 
On May 5th, the world observed World Hand Hygiene Day. And to celebrate that, in today's Taiwan Explained, we're going to bring you an epic showdown of soap versus hand sanitizer, or as my nieces like to call it, Hanitizer. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have 60 seconds. Are you ready, Andrew? Yes. All right, go. First of all, let's start off with some footage of the health officials washing their hands on Tuesday. Now, it looks like they're uh, rubbing green paint on their hands, and that's because they are. The goal is to show that they've done a good job. Now, the health minister was quick to remind people that you should take the gloves off before washing your hands. <laughs> he also said uh, that any color soap works. It doesn't have to be green. And now for our showdown. In the red corner, we have soap. In the blue corner, we have hand sanitizer. So which one is better at fighting coronavirus? Well, soap doesn't just wash the virus away, it destroys it. It breaks through the outer layer made of fat and protein, and the virus disintegrates in water. And, but you need to wash for 20 to 30 seconds for it to work. Now, the cool thing is, is you don't need one of those fancy antibacterial soaps because any soap will do. So what about hand sanitizer? Well, it has to be at least 60% alcohol to work on viruses, but people don't often use enough and they rub it off before it dries. So how do we use it effectively? Oh, you almost got it. Enough. I almost got it, right? Enough. enough. <laughs> and you know who the winner is, right? It's soap. Yes, soap. <laughs> soap works. But how about we do sometimes have to use hand sanitizer when we can't get to soap? Okay. So how do we use it effectively? So only, again, if you can't uh, use soap and water, you should, first of all, make sure that it's 60% alcohol. And then also you need to cover your hands completely and rub them the same way that you would if you were washing with soap uh -huh. and water. And then leave it on your hands until your hands dry. Okay. Let them air dry. Let them air dry. Okay. That's right. And you, you can't use it to wash off dirt and grease and like heavy chemicals. You still need to use soap and water for okay. that. Okay. Yeah. And we have an exciting experiment today. That's that right? right. So thank you to my assistant. So what we have here <laughs> is we have four slices of bread. Um, we have, uh, first of all, the control. So this one came straight from uh, the loaf of bread. And then you see we have one here that says uh, sanitizer. So we all touched that. The entire team touched that <laughs> after we used hand sanitizer. We have another one called soap. We all touched that after we washed our hands thoroughly. And Nally, I need your help with this one. Right That's now? right, the dirty one. Touch Can it? you please touch it for me? <laughs> you get my hands really dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So we're going to all touch this. And uh, the results of this test, we're going to come back here next week and see what happened. All right? Other people are going to touch it too, right? Not That's just me. right. Okay. The entire team. It won't be just Natalie's okay. hands. <laughs> all right. That is Taiwan Explained for the week. All right, Natalie, for World Hand Hygiene Day, I have brought you a gift. Aww. This is wonderful. This is tea tree soap. It smells nice, right? Yes. It is handmade. And in fact... You made this? I did. Wow. <laughs> I went and found Impressive. somebody who makes soap, and I asked him to show me how it's made. Have a look. All righty. I'm so excited today. We are going to be learning how to make soap Yay. with our soap professional. Uh, only two years. Shao <laughs> Kang, <laughs> but he is truly a professional. You actually have a certificate in this, right? Yeah, actually I took like a... From oh, okay, yeah. excellent. So today we're just going to make like a, more like a hand wash soap. Okay, so perfect then, for the time of coronavirus, right? Exactly. Also one like everybody can easily get this oil. Like uh, I only have a two kind of oil, coconut and olive oil. Coconut and olive oil. Okay. So we will put the recipe. Yeah, we'll have the, the recipe below. <laughs> <laughs> you have to prepare something very simple, like you know, a scale. Yeah. Okay. So the guy goes up because I have a glasses, so I don't know. Is that a good look for me? Are you going to check my temperature? Yes. <laughs> also, you really need to take a temperature of like the oil. Okay. Gloves. Perfect. Can I use swimming goggles as well? Oh, yeah, yeah. As okay. long as you can like, protect your eyes. Okay, you protect your eyes. Yeah, you look quite uh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I look what? Like, like alien. Alien? <laughs> How do you say this? Uh, lay. Uh, sodium. Wait a second. Who's the expert now? <laughs> I think you have to say the whole thing. Sodium okay. hydroxide. This is like a sodium hydroxide. Okay. This is also like a, the part you have to be careful because you know, uh, when they're not with water, is not very dangerous, but when they come into the water, they can be 
they can very burn your skin. I use eyes so they will keep temperature low, low. and also you don't have very like how to say like that. The some smell, like strong smell. I see. Okay, so it prevents the strong smell and it keeps the temperature from going too high. And the reason is because we want the temperatures to be similar. Exactly. Yeah? Ah, see, I know what I'm Ooh, talking about. You took class. <laughs> I took a class. So now we're gonna do the mixing. Okay. So this part in the fast, right? Yeah, fast forward. <laughs> <laughs> delicious but please don't drink this at oh, home no. <laughs> or anywhere else. Oh you know when you're making the soap please keep your pads or your kids away. That's important. Actually Xiaogang has two kitties and they are very curious. They're already actually just uh, curling up near the, the base of the lights over there. And another one when he was pouring the oil just a moment ago was on the table watching him pour. Very curious. You know what they said about cats? What? Curiosity kills a okay. cat. Don't kill your cats. But they also say cats have like a nine lives. And did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> now I think the now level we can take the temperature. See, temperature is 29. Keep the oil and the lay water mm -hmm. after you mixed mm -hmm. to below 40 degrees. And make sure you slowly putting this in the oil. You can see. Look at that. So is it still dangerous? Yes, I think so. So I still do. have to keep my glasses yeah, on. Okay. I think you keep your glass on. That means I can't wink at you. <laughs> Nobody's gonna see it. <laughs> Actually now it's always like a, I really like this, uh, the, in the beginning of this kind of like a Chinese said Zao Xiang, I, I really Zao like Xiang, it. so the fragrance of soap. Yeah, I really like this smell. Like Time lapse. Alright. So can you see the, the trays? Right? Yeah. See, this is ready to put the essential oil. Okay. Because this is for the hand like wash soap. Mm -hmm. So I choose tea tray. Because Ooh. tea tray is also very natural and also it's good for the hand Gorgeous. wash soap. Looks like white chocolate. I think now you can just uh, shake it up a little bit. bit. 12 hours, they will be ready to cut. Wow, you know, it's funny. If this was a dessert, this would go straight in the oven. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna cut the soap. So we made the soap like uh, two days ago. There you go. And, hold. and then you just like uh, wait for four weeks and you can use it. So that is how you make handmade soap. Uh, we'll have the full interview for you on YouTube and Facebook, and we'll have the recipe as well so you can make it yourself. Mother's Day is Sunday, and we're going to look at the world of motherhood through a new game called Three Picks. So you guys are going to guess a story about what moms are thinking today by looking at three pictures. That's helpful, right, Angel? We're, we're moms. Are you ready for yeah. this? No, I was going to say, we have, she's mom and we're like the boys. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> okay, but before we do that, we're going to take a look at what a recent survey revealed about working moms in Taiwan. Mother's Day is near, and a Yes123 job bank survey shows that working moms are under a lot of stress, both at work and at home. While women try to give their best to their family and career, they often have conflicting feelings when they try to balance it all. To top it off, they're exhausted. Breakfast shop owner Liu Nayu says that managing a breakfast shop takes a lot of energy. Taking care of her children after work is very demanding as well. Another working mom says that coming home means starting her second job. Once the kids are finally asleep, she then has to do housework, which is never-ending. The survey found that the top five workplace worries for moms are 
They can't work overtime or go on business trips. Their low salary doesn't cover family expenses. Taking time off means more work for colleagues. They do the same work for less pay. Their career plans are limited by their children's needs. These are their top worries at home. There's housework waiting for them after work. They worry about their kids' grades, household finances, missing out on time with their children, and finding suitable child care. Most working moms feel guilty about not being there for their children. On weekdays, they spend less than two hours a day with them. Ten percent of moms in Taiwan say they barely have any time to spend with their children. No matter how you look at it, being a mom is not easy. You know, Andrew, I know how hard it is to be a mom because I was me when I was seven, <laughs> <laughs> and I would not Ooh, like to hang out with that kid. When you put it like that, uh, sorry, mom, and thank you. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> okay, so are you guys ready to guess、um, about what moms are thinking today? Yes. In a new game, three、uh-huh. pictures. Okay. They represent three sentiments. Okay. That moms are thinking today in Taiwan. Okay. Okay. That was discovered through some surveys.、Mm. All right. So let's take a look at the first picture. Pain. <laughs> <laughs> That's clearly childbirth.、Uh, excitement.、Uh, eight, Nervousness. Say goodbye to the next eighteen years. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what Exhaustion. I'm、so、they would actually do it again. Oh, they oh, would do it again. Yes, they would start over. If they could start over, they would do it again. Would you do it again? I would do it again. Oh wow! Even though I have two boys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. What is she saying? <laughs> and then、um, let's look at the second picture. This is、oh. another sentiment that they have. I think they're tired. They need they're coffee. Tired. <laughs> they want to figure out an accurate way to balance their home life and their career. Ooh. Close. Ooh. Yeah, actually, that's it. They want to have a career, though. Oh. Even though they want to be moms. Was that a career mom in the photo? Yeah, she's doing the coffee. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the third picture. Ooh. Ooh.、Uh, moms want to be out in the great outdoors. They want an escape. Um. Right. They <laughs> want an escape. They want time to themselves. And guess what? The minimum amount of time they think they need to get away from it all. Oh. Uh, are we、better. talking about in a day or? I think like a lifetime. <laughs> 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 so they said at least nine days. At least nine days. Yeah, remember in the video they're stressed out at home, they're stressed out at work. I was、mm. stressed out watching that video. I mean, seriously, I'm stressed out right now. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty good job, you guys. Thank you.、So、that's what moms are feeling. They don't regret being a mom. They would do it all over again, but they want to have their own career. They want to have some time to themselves. So let's、uh, treat our moms well, and moms should treat themselves well. It's、mm-hmm. not easy being a mom, right? That's right.、Ooh. And、uh, wish all the moms out there happy Mother's Day. And now for our lightning round news quiz, I'm going to see if Leslie and Andrew have been paying attention this week. <laughs> Hint: We haven't. <laughs> okay, so we have 60 seconds to guess as many questions as you can,、okay. and you can play along at home if you like. All right, so you guys ready?、Mm. Indeed. All right,、mm. let's get going. According to a recent survey, what's the biggest source of stress for working moms at home?、Uh, their kids.、Uh, Naughty kids. Nope. No, <laughs> career. No. 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 You guys are paying attention. Housework. Housework. Okay. <laughs> What national event this month is going to be very low key? The、uh, inauguration. inauguration. Very good. What country did a charter flight bring Taiwanese back from? India. This India. Week? Good. What can Taiwanese in Hubei, China, do now? Travel home. To、uh-huh. somewhere? Oh yeah, they they come home by themselves. <laughs> commercial flights. Yes. Commercial flights. Yes. What new languages can new Im- immigrants learn through government-sponsored classes now? Mandarin. This year. Aboriginal languages. Nope. Taiwanese. English. <laughs> Taiwanese and another one. Hakka. 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 Very good. Okay. How many fans can go to baseball games starting Friday? A thousand.、Friday? Right. And a video featuring. What Taiwanese dish has been nominated for a Webby Award? Pearl milk tea. I have no、The、idea. The real fun. No.、A、Taiwanese dish. Sweet potatoes. Pineapple cakes. No. <laughs> <laughs> New Romian. No. Oh man. Oh, what else is there? there? <laughs> It's like <laughs> pork I mean... chops. Chicken legs. Fifty. I'll give you a hint. Fifty cent a dish versus twenty nine dollar dish. What's the dish? Uh, dumplings. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you guys should check it out. That's the name of the、um, the video,、mm-hmm. and that's the picture of the two hosts, 
Mm. Eating dumplings, one of the dumplings, and that's another picture of the 50 cent dumplings. Don't those look good? Oh, yummy. Yes. That like video really I makes me hungry. In my mouth. So, uh, anyways, you guys did a pretty good job. Thank you. Except for you didn't catch the mom question. I'm disappointed. I was just you distracted. <laughs> just all over the place, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were a lot of reasons why they stressed I was out. Busy week. I was Bad thinking boys. about all those. <laughs> so many good answers. Yeah. Okay, that is our news quiz for the week. Thank you so much for joining us for this squeaky clean edition of Taiwan Insider. Be sure to connect with us on social media. Yes, we would love to hear from you. Leave a comment below. For Taiwan Insider, I'm Natalie So. I'm Leslie Liao. And I'm Andrew Ryan. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day.